So in rough terms, our first brewery at full scale could feed about 6 million people. So looking further ahead, we aim to scale up to 10 giga breweries by 2045. What if we could create food without agricultural land, without soil? And what if we can make it drastically more efficient? That's basically our mission at Farmless, to decouple protein production from agricultural land. We do that using a natural fermentation uh, to create a product that is very high in protein, uh, that is super nutritious. So right now, of all the habitable land that we can use, 40% is eaten up by animal agriculture to create proteins. So we said, what if we could create proteins in a completely new way without the need for agricultural land? Because the current system is very inefficient with very serious consequences for the planet. We know that we have technologies that are much better in capturing energy. And if we make a good comparison to solar, right, we have an efficiency of like 22 to 25 percent, but we're very bad at creating complex, tasty, organic proteins from scratch. That's very hard. Like we can't do that through chemistry, but nature can make those things very well. If we have 100% sunlight, only 0.15% to 0.25% is turned into plant proteins. And not all of that is edible, so you're left with like 0.05 to 0.1% of proteins that are edible plant proteins. And if we feed that to animals, it's an incredibly inefficient, wasteful process, right? Uh, insultingly, actually. So then 99.999% of all of sunlight's energy is wasted. Fermentation is actually a really ancient technology that humans have been using for thousands of years to make food. And the average person actually has quite a lot of experience, right? At least with the end products of fermentation. So if we think about beer, which everybody loves beer, uh, it's actually a fermentation process, right? It's yeast taking sugar and turning that into alcohol. We have selected a microbe that we're using and scaling now, and in just a day, we can grow it to high density and dry it down to a powder. And that powder is 70 to 80% protein and has a more favorable amino acid profile for human consumption than plant sources of protein or whey. So at this scale, we optimize a lot of the parameters. And just to give you an idea, within one day, basically, if you have like this volume, one fifth of that would be the protein equivalent of meat. And here you actually see the product, which is between you know, six to 80% protein, highly nutritious. And then once this is done, we analyze it, we look at its nutritional content, um, and we look at its functionalities. So in the kitchen, we play around with it and understand like what we can make with it and how it behaves. The right microbe was something that grows quickly, but also something that has a lot of protein, something that has a good amino acid profile, and something, of course, that smells and tastes nice because at the end of the day, I can have a really fast growing microbe that's really good for you, but if it isn't tasty, no one's gonna wanna eat it. And the crazy thing about these microorganisms is that they can eat on everything, right? So once you figure out like, okay, what can we efficiently make? You can find microorganisms that can eat it. And that's the cool thing, right? So what we do over here is, is making the product taste amazing. So not only farmless as such, but also the products that are made with farmless in the end. So for example, at the moment, I'm testing uh, if I can make a delicious uh, indulgent protein snack out of it. Farmless excites me because it's a, a novel product, so nobody has worked with it before, and I just love discovering new things. We're actually still developing the product, so before we're giving it to other people, um, we wanna make sure uh, it fits their expectations. So there's a number of issues that can come into play when you're trying to increase the scale of a process. Um, brewery no different than a lot of other processes, honestly. One thing you have to deal with are actual physical differences at scale. So behind me, there's a two 300 liter brewing setup. And so that's very nice to do R&D with, but we still need to scale this 200 times, which in rough terms is about half the space we're in right now. And with each of that scaling up steps, you have challenges to make sure the aeration is right, the steering is right, the mixing is right, and that all needs solving. So our goal is to have the first commercial brewery up and running somewhere around the end of 2027. So in rough terms, our first brewery at full scale could feed about 6 million people for protein. So looking further ahead, we aim to scale up to 
10 gigabreweries by 2045, so why? The end result is that with the land that we can potentially give back to nature, we can rewild and store one gigaton of emissions per year. And we also say like our impact should be visible from space. So throughout human history, the biggest increases in wealth have been us switching animals and plants for other forms of energy and removing the biological constraints. So a good example is the Industrial Revolution. In the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, there was a lot of deforestation because we used wood. And then we started using coal and that accelerated the Industrial Revolution. We got away from plants and animals and we created a tremendous amount of wealth. And now there's a new opportunity to shift away from animals and plants for protein production. All of the ways our civilization can collapse is all through agriculture, right? So all potential extinction events are all through agriculture. So what this technology allows us to create something that is independent from agriculture. So when shit hits the van, we're able to scale up existing fermentation infrastructure and create resilience. So I, I interned at NASA and I conducted some really cool research there. I did a project there uh, operating sort of a Martian analog chamber uh, with simulated Martian soil to try and figure out if this particular microbe could not just survive, but even reproduce. Could the farmless process work on Mars? I think the answer to that is yes. The components that we need are all there. So I think definitely there's lessons we can learn from processes like that and try and apply them to our current process to get it in such a direction that it could in the future work on Mars. We love the concept indeed of producing food in space. I think once we're profitable, we would love to focus on the, on the food in space. So our inputs are totally separate from agriculture. Uh, all of our inputs can be derived from renewable energy, water, uh, CO2, and some nutrients, uh, basically the same ones the roots of a plant would take up. And if you take a moment to think about the implications of this, it's incredible.